I'm using OBS or the Open Broadcaster Studio to record this video right now. Every single YouTuber or content creator that I talk to, they tell me that they use OBS to record their videos. And just yesterday, Mudahar from Some Ordinary Gamers released a video called Google is Putting YouTubers in Danger. And in that video, he showcased a Google advertisement. One of the Google ads that gets promoted and ranked to the top of Google results, showcasing and sharing a advertisement and a link to a fake malicious scam website where you might download what looks like OBS or the Open Broadcaster Studio. However, it is not the OBS Open Broadcaster Studio. It is in fact information stealing malware that hackers are going to use to steal your passwords, to steal your credentials, maybe credit card information, anything present in your browsing sessions and secrets. In this video, I want to expand what Mudahar showcased in his video further just a little bit and hopefully get some cool show and tell to discuss what this really does and how you can better prevent yourself or protect yourself from it. And you know what? Hey, let's play with this thing. Let's fire it up. Let's see if we can detonate this. Let's get this malware running in a dedicated dynamic analysis sandbox so we can better understand what it is in fact doing. So hopping on my computer screen, Mudahar was able to actually see the Google ad that served this right at the very, very top of Google results when he entered OBS download. Now at the time recording, I'm not able to actually see this come through. I get the result for the legitimate actual in fact OBS a studio, not the malicious software. However, we could see from Mudahar's video that that link is at OBS STRMS WIEV dot site or obstremsweave.site, I don't know, however you want to really pronounce that. But note that this is OBS Studio website, as you might expect it to look like if you went to the actual obsproject.com where you could naturally download the real OBS software. Interesting thing, obviously if I put these side by side, they look identical because they basically are. Uh, granted, you trying to download a link from the legitimate and real OBS studio will give you what you were expecting in trying to navigate to any specific links. Uh, over on the left-hand side, going to the malicious, evil, and nefarious website, kind of a funny thing, absolutely every single link is a link to their download. Uh, in fact, you can see it, I don't know if you notice, at the very, very bottom left, pointing in the wrong way because the camera's weird. Uh, it is actually trying to pull down from Discord CDN, the Discord Cloud Delivery Network. It's gonna fire up some attachment that some strange old skitty could just slap into Discord and then make it accessible to download anywhere from anyone. Uh, but again, I'm hovering over the download link or their blog or their help file or their forum or their contribute button, and it's always going to give me that, even if I were to select a Mac OS or Linux. Uh, the socials just refer back to this specific page, but if you scroll down to the footer, I think it's hysterical, even their privacy policy, open collective Patreon, yada, yada, yada. Everything links to their download here. Now I can go ahead and click on this, download the file here, and oop, I actually see Guardio getting in the way of it. Fantastic. I appreciate them doing that. Hey, by the way, for some added context, um, this story and this conversation, I did see actually shared from Bleeping Computer, another news outlet that's talking about this sort of thing, Google ads and Google advertisements being used to promote or showcase malware or mouse spam or phishing websites or things that an innocent victim might fall and pray to, oh, actually have their information stolen from malware. Very, very cool in the reporting that Bleeping Computer did. They actually took in some insight from Trend Micro alongside Guardio or Guardio Labs. And huge kudos and credit to Guardio. I'm using their blocker here uh, and their browser extension. Guardio is a fan of the channel and I appreciate their support. And that's why, hey, they actually had a trigger on fire off there. But did want to give a little bit of point and uh, some fanfare. Uh, appreciate Guardio being able to track this thing down for us just as well. Anyway, let's get back to it and let's actually allow this file so we can go ahead and play with it. That should finish downloading there. And I don't know if you noticed, but this thing is 120 megabytes in size. Thanks, Guardio. Appreciate it. 
check it out inside of my downloads folder. The file itself is 120 megabytes. That's the zip file. But if you actually take a look at the contents of the zip file, you have the executable installer itself. Again, masquerading and faking the OBS or Open Broadcaster Studio software. That's at 462 megabytes, which is massive, 75% uh, compression ratio. And this about folder just has a whole lot of ADMX files random stuff. Uh, ultimately, this makes for, what, I don't know, 3.0 megs? Yeah, 3.10 megabytes, nothing really big. Uh, again, just even in the other folder, I, I feel like this is just used for junk. I don't think this actually does anything or is included within the installer process anyway. That's not something that you see when you download the legitimate and real OBS installer. Now, in Mudahar's video, he did run this file through and scan it with Microsoft Defender, the native, natural, and inherent Windows antivirus software, the one that's freely available on all modern Windows operating systems. And at the time, Windows Defender, Microsoft Defender, whatever, didn't get any hits. It didn't trigger it, didn't flag this file as malicious because, hey, you know, maybe there just aren't signatures or heuristics or whatever sample information out at the moment because, hey, this is a new thing being out pushed into the wild. It is important to note, in my opinion, that the reason the file size is so large when we're seeing this executable like over 400 megs is because it's very, very common for information stealers or Redline specifically, the Redline stealer that we might be dealing with here, to just uh, fill up and bloat and add in lots of padding within the file and the binary itself so that other kind of automated solutions to do security analysis to determine whether or not this file is malicious or not, like a sandbox to test and explore this malware in, or some dynamic analysis solution, the file's too big and it overwhelms it and it will not be as easily scanned and worked with. Uh, that's why, hey, you'll see this giant file that isn't really the size that it needs to be for the legitimate, natural, real OBS installer. And let me show you that in action, by the way. Here I am online at app.any.run, the online tool for a whole lot of dynamic analysis and running malware inside of a sandbox. If I wanna go ahead and create a new task, let's say, oh, sweet, uh, any run is super duper generous and is willing to let me play with their Hunter subscription, uh, the kind of the top two here. So I can amp this up to like 64 bit, Windows 10, hey, a whole lot of maximum time to be able to play with this. But if again, I wanted to upload this file as I have just downloaded it, even the compressed zip archive file, the one that we downloaded from the malicious website is 120 megabytes and larger than 100 megabytes, something that anyone is unwilling to work with. Now that's not to say that some of that analysis is just straight up impossible. Again, in Mudahar's video, he brings this file and uploads it to VirusTotal, one of those super common, hey, very, very well-known analysis websites where it might be able to actually test this file against multiple antivirus engines. And he finds that, oh, wow, the, of course, original intended legitimate OBS installer has zero hits, it's not malicious. However, the found malware file given from this scam Google ad that pops up does have a couple hits, again, being Redline Stealer. Granted, he did end up uploading the zip archive again, which I would want to go explore. What is the exe file flag? Uh, if I actually try to go through both of these, it's interesting, I actually get, for one thing, no hits on the executable, and when I go take a look at the zip file, that actually is going to be a different hash than what he received, which leads me to believe, oh, they might be actually swapping out and changing what they are serving as time goes on. As things get flagged, things get tracked down, they're gonna keep up the hackers increasing their campaign here. And hey, another thing that's important to note here, uh, redline stealer and information stealing malware just like this is super duper common. It's not new, it's not novel. Uh, we've been writing about it and sharing research and other information and threat intelligence about it for quite a long time. Uh, and I actually, hey, took a look at it in another video, one that I released previously a couple months back, where I received a phishing email, even through like like a, a YouTube copyright scam, uh, where I were to download and play with and actually review some uh, document, but instead was staged to be malware that might steal credentials and potentially gain access to hack my YouTube channel. There's a video if folks are interested in that, but in that video, because I couldn't upload this thing to any run or do some dynamic analysis, because 
that's what I prefer. Like I'm lazy. I just kind of want to see, Oh, what does it do without hooking up all the wires and doing the operation surgery myself? Right. In that video, we did do some simple, small analysis with like Procmon or process Explorer stuff that you might be able to play with in the sys internal suite for some simple poor man analysis. Uh, in this video again, I hate a little bit lazy. I did have a thought I had kind of maybe a clever thing. What if I could just use the any run sandbox to go, download this sample because it is still open on the internet right now. I'm not going to give any run to be uh, uploading that file. I'll have it downloaded and you work with it itself. Stop. Before we go any further in today's video, please allow me to fulfill a contractual obligation and let's roll today's sponsorship promo. Developers are constantly changing the digital landscape, but building secure software isn't always easy especially in growing applications worked on across massive teams. Companies end up with mountains of code and they have to make a choice, stay competitive or stay secure. But with Sneak, you don't have to choose. Sneak helps bake security into the software development lifecycle. Sneak helps you scale and streamline by automatically scanning your code, dependencies, containers, and configuration files, finding and fixing vulnerabilities in real time. And it is super easy to use. You can sign up for free with my link below, import your repositories, and there, Sneak just finds your vulnerabilities. You can fix all these issues with just a single click. Sneak automatically opens a fixing pull request so you can just merge them into your repository and move on. And it fits seamlessly into all of your existing tools. IDEs, the command line, CICD pipelines, cloud infrastructure, and more. Millions of developers love Sneak. And you can see for yourself. Get started for free with my link below and develop fast and stay secure with Sneak. Okay, so back on my computer screen, I'm gonna be still working in any run. I'm gonna set actually back to my Windows 10, 64-bit public protocol, and let's actually not upload the installer file itself, but let's go back to, let's actually just, I don't know, take maybe one of the actual things that was present, and I've kind of downloaded this and got it stored and saved already here. I've extracted this and I have the actual executable that we would pull from the zip archive downloaded from the application, but let's not not give it the giant massive file here. Let's actually just take one of these small files and let, you know, any run start up a sandbox for us. Now with that, we can actually take advantage of the sandbox and go use it to download the real malware. Sure, it's gonna do some process and maybe kind of figure out, oh, what's going on with that other file, but you know, we can still go explore because we have the web browser open, let's try to go to obsstremswiev.site where we could download our malware. And ooh, looks like it's already getting kind of reported here. I do see Microsoft's coming through with it here. Uh, maybe that came from Guardia, I'm not quite sure. Let's go ahead and continue onward and let's go ahead and download our malicious sample here from Discord. I'll hit save. This is gonna take a little bit of time to download so I will speed run the video here, but as you'll know, any run is going to be keeping track of all the sweet stuff that's happening here for us so we can get lazy in our malware analysis. All right, now the zip file has finished downloading. I'm going to go ahead and open up the folder and I'm going to go ahead and extract all of this here. I'm going to hit extract to, we'll go ahead and slap it on the desktop, hit okay there, and that should bring everything ready here for us. You'll note any run is tracking all of these processes that are open and doing great stuff. Uh, that should be nice and easy for us because once we go ahead and fire off the detonator here, pull the trigger on this malware, we should be able to go see our OBS Studio installer kick off. Now, it is going to end up beginning here. You'll see it running and it should prompt us with, hey, let's go and install OBS. Again, bear in mind, this is all fake. This is all a scam. You can probably see some of the sweet stuff cruising through here. I know my face is in the way, uh, but let me go ahead and move my head just a moment, and that way we'll be able to see uh, what is firing in a lot of these. Let me just drag my face up while this continues to move forward here. Note that the full installer does end up checking out, oh, what's the date of Windows install? Okay, maybe it does a couple of things, checking the computer name, LSA protection, yada, yada, yada. But there's some odd behavior when it does drop another file. This is kind of normal for, hey, potential installers, but we've got other things that it does that are 
strange and odd and weird. For one thing, there's a whole lot of these executions all next to each other. Uh, that might just be some oddity. Maybe I double clicked it. Maybe it was doing something strange. I don't know. However, there are some interesting things in the malicious categories that it's tracking here. And check out the command line is now C colon STR local gate. Uh, we also have a command prompt executed, but uh, cmd.exe does run with PowerShell syntax with an encoded command, uh, 100 out of 100 score that it should be malicious, uh, and base64 details that would be probably pretty interesting to go take a look at. I don't know if anyone just happens to know what that might be, base64 decoded off the top of their head, but again, command prompt, cmd.exe, doing some strange stuff, uh, seeing what more it might stage here. And install util is suddenly dropped? Uh, okay, that's pretty weird, that's pretty whack. Now install util is firing off, and that's connecting outbound to a usual port, looking for installed software and actions that look like stealing of personal data. All the while, the victim, the fool, the target here is still under the impression that they are installing OBS Studio. They're going to start their YouTube career. They're going to be the next streamer, uh, streamer of the year for 2023. But let's go take a look at all these other things that I finish here. Uh, before I allow OBS to start, I do want to explore a little bit more because you can note the connections that this tries to fire off by process. Internet Explorer, of course, is cruising through Microsoft Edge. I'm more interested in what our OBS thing will try to reach out to or any of its child processes, right? We saw install util get spawned, which is normally just, hey, trying to invoke and actually execute code in another method, in another way. Looks like we are going to have that reaching out to eth0.me, which I believe is just a well-known website to just display your own IP address so that the victim, the target, the malware might know, okay, what is the IP address that I'm working with here? What's the victim that I've compromised? Alongside this, you can see install util does make a call out to your IP address 35234791173. No domain set on that. However, the ASN does tell it this is from the Google Cloud platform. Going to assume that might be the callback. That might be the remote access trojan. That might be where we're exfiltrating this data to. Forgive me, hey, not strictly a remote access trojan or a command and control server where the operator is going to keep interacting with your victim PC that's been hacked, but that's where it's going to deliver all the stolen information like passwords, like browser cookies, etc., etc. But we still need to make sure we can see that coming through. So we know, okay, here's our culprit, IP address 35234791173, maybe hosted by GCP, but this install util was, other, was doing other weird stuff, right? Let me go take a look at the more info portion here, and let's see what this could showcase for us. Uh, we can see down below all of the processes that this little sandbox environment was exploring. We can see OBS Studio Kickstart and all the things that it might do here. Taking a look at the deep details and the information that it did fire off for us, we might be able to see some more interesting things. And in fact, this is where we get some oddball stuff that's going to look sketchy to begin with. And if you wanted to filter out some of the information things here, we can do that just as easily. But I'm still sketched out by this STR local gate. Maybe we could do some research, go track that thing down, see if it's maybe just some odd code name for a version or some sample of this Redline Stealer. Um, anyway, uh, let's go explore some of the other child processes that might do even other interesting things. This one does some reading of the computer names, etc. Maybe pulling some install options.dll in a random temporary directory. It would be worthwhile to go run the natural, regular OBS installer uh, in another sandbox just like this to see what that might do, to see does it do anything different? Does it do anything uh, separate than what our malicious copy does? It might be worthwhile to note, though, that this happens over and over and over again. Uh, also, hey, staging some regular stuff like potentially real OBS Studio files or program files, etc. Again, to look like genuine OBS. And then again, it may very well be genuine OBS. It does drop a lot of the um, files that are needed to be able to keep track of what 
OBS should do for recording or streaming, like virtual camera modules, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I don't want to drive in and bore us with that too much. However, I do think it's worthwhile to explore some of the other things that kick off here. Uh, there are some strange stuff that I do want us to kind of hone in on, uh, especially a lot of these weird command prompt and PowerShell commands that are being ran. Additionally, another executable that gets dropped, put into roaming, and actually modified it within the registry to make that the login or log off shell. Uh, it is gonna put randomly named folder, randomly named executable, probably staging again, the data exfiltration portion of the Redline Stealer installed here. We can go pull that down and explore it if folks are interested. Uh, again, you, I, I'll share this sample and I'll share this link and everything where again, the registry is being modified to actually kick that thing off uh, through Explorer here. but. Let's look at the interesting thing. Hey, let's go grab this encoded PowerShell string. I will go to CyberChef. Does that work here? Yeah. Super simple, super easy. Just because I'm kicking around on Windows for the moment, let me do a from base64. Uh, oh, and that's going to be doing like a weird UTF-1. Can I change that to UTF-16? Uh, data format? I don't like that it has the weird hyphens in the middle, but you you get it. You, you can see that this says set MP preference, add an exclusion path, C colon backslash, which I don't know if I have to tell you is the command to have Windows Defender or the built-in natural antivirus set an exclusion for files that it will not scan, for files that it will not actually end up taking a look and trying to see if there's malware. When you add an exclusion to the C colon backslash for your hard drive for the entire file system, it says, okay, Defender will no longer scan anything on the entire file system, <laughs> which basically nerfs your antivirus. That probably won't end up executing or succeeding anyway if the user doesn't have admin privileges, um, in which case I believe our uh, any run sandbox dynamic analysis user does. Uh, however, cool so we can see that functionality. But note, hey, all those cmd.exe command lines that we all end up triggering with the encoded base64 is gonna be trying to nerf uh, that specific Windows Defender scan. It's adding the exclusion path so it does nothing else. Also odd some certificates here, other things that we might be able to go explore. But the real smoking gun, when we get into some of the craziness, even if we're taking keeping track of others, install util, excuse me, install util.exe is where we're staging to run the real detonator for our Redline software. That is where we might be able to see a lot of the information that we're grabbing, but the actions that look like stealing your personal data is where we end up scrolling through and seeing how it might access all of the potential files trying to read data present in local caches for different kinds of software. Uh, these are things that I don't know all of their origins from. However, Brave software certainly sounds like the Brave web browser. Uh, I believe we can track down even others. Um, Vivaldi, Yandex, Torch, Komodo, Orbitum. I think a couple of these might very well be um, like Bitcoin cryptocurrency wallet holders. Uh, I, I'm not in that world just yet, so I don't know. Here's Chromium, of course, another web browser. Here's Thunderbird. Oh, here's other Brave settings for local extensions. And again, we saw all this again in the previous other video that would be checking out uh, all of this within an other sandbox like Triage or T-I-R-A dot G-E, where you could track this down online. And well, hey, that was us just kind of scrolling through the basic information for behavior and different events. Uh, note that we can explore other things that each of these might end up doing. Here were all of our other registry changes that you know, are a little bit weird and whether or not we're going to be allowing tracing or any actual auditing or logging of any of this behavior. Um, strange stuff and other activities that I don't want to pretend that I know all the answers to. However, here's the HTTP request that did come back with eth0.me to find its IP address. And additionally, you also have the other communications like this one sent to the Google Cloud platform or the culprit 35234791700. 
and three. Again, reputation for Google Cloud Platform, kind of just an ephemeral temporary potential HQ for the hackers, could very well be malicious, but doesn't always mean that, right? Let's take a look at what the network stream might showcase here if it gives me any details. Yeah, let's go ahead and see. Ooh, maybe the raw packets that were sent to this thing here were trying to denote, oh, here's some syntax with JSON or the JavaScript object notation to say, look, we're going to be sending encrypted data here uh, and back and forth. Does that work? Certainly seems like it's trying to. It does get data received back, so it must have been communicating with that in that port 15647, as that, again, kind of data back and forth to receive is still working here. What that means is if this were really ran on the target, if this were really actually detonated in a live environment in an actual victim system, like my own or like any other YouTuber or content creator, anyone trying to use this OBS software, being fooled and deceived by this malware, it's going to have a lot of their passwords, credentials, and information stolen. Hey, real quick, uh, let me please note, time ran out on our dynamic sandbox uh, before I was able to continue actually letting OBS run and invoke and kickstart. Uh, with that said, I had ran some previous examples where I actually had a regular OBS install to kind of compare and contrast, hey, what's normal, what's not in this install process. Obviously, hey, you are going to have some of those specific DLLs or libraries set up and configured with the 64-bit stuff that it might end up checking for virtual cameras, yada, yada, yada. Obviously, there's no setting defender exclusions, but when I had another sample while I was previously playing with this, uh, underneath Explorer, uh, we can ignore those until getting to actually installing the OBS uh, software. After it did finish installing, I said, hey, you know what? Sure. Let's go ahead and start up OBS software. Let's go ahead and run what you said that you really installed. And you might be able to see that down here. OBS Studio 2.81.2.exe, separate from full installer.exe. Child process of it because it did spawn through that installer. But note, even that is going to end up kickstarting this command prompt that tries to, once again, disable or actually set exclusions for Windows Defender. And it kicks off install util again. It, it, I have to think, maybe I'm wrong here, maybe I'm going out on a ledge and it's not the right ledge. Is that a backdoor to OBS? Inst like, I, I might be wrong there because OBS64.exe is still separate. Um, I, I can't say that with any confidence. I think maybe this stager of STR local gate is, is really the issue here. Um, however, running OBS 64.exe, the pure original OBS. Well, any run might say it's malicious and might be still getting confused and caught up for just natural stuff that OBS has to do. Genuine, legitimate OBS. Obviously, our STR local gate OBS studio that tries to set exclusions and run install util, that's bad news bears. There be dragons, that's malware. Hey, last couple things before I wind this down here, because I know I've been rambling for a long time, and I'm sorry for that. Uh, but I did want to go explore what that, you know, 35.12 whatever IP address was, the actual exfiltration endpoint to pull back and store and retrieve all of the stolen credentials or information. And I thought I'd go take a look at that on Shodan. Now, bear in mind, we have some context clues that this was probably hosted within Google Cloud Platform, GCP. And with that, it's a cloud instance, which means it's probably a very temporary and ephemeral IP address, which could very well change quite often. Uh, kind of an oddball thing. It, I'm curious what this actual thing might be hosting because the Shodan response doesn't include that port that we saw, the 15647 or whatever port they were actually performing this communication on to share info back and forth. But noting here, oh, Shodan said it was last seen, quote unquote, this date, 1231, the very end of the year here for 2022. But scrolling down to some of the other services, it looked like there was a response back when it was communicating with this on December 26th. So I can't exactly trust right now what Shodan might be telling me because it's so variable. Because it's a temporary cloud instance, we just don't quite know if that, oh, current port listing is exactly accurate. Those things kind of hop in and out because it's just a 
cloud instance. However, the phishing domain itself, the actual staged malware website, obsstremsweave.site or whatever, that is an interesting domain that we might be able to go explore and check out the history of. If I were to go and do a simple who is lookup, I can track down that this was actually created. This domain was registered back on December 29th. Uh, and we were seeing stories and conversations pop about this tradecraft, these techniques and these malware campaigns way back on December 28th. Mudahar did his own video and reporting on the 30th, and now I wanna drop this video on the 31st. Uh, so pretty recent. If we're gonna be like in the December 29th is really when this went live. And with that, I am finally done talking. <laughs> Very sorry. Hey, you know, a little bit verbose, but I hope we got into some of the cool fun stuff and we were able to explore this just a little bit further than, hey, what some of the other great folks have been chatting about. Uh, and we can at least see this thing in a live, dynamic, interactive sandbox to do some of that dynamic analysis, even if it's taking the easy high road here where, hey, we're taking, a, taking advantage of some of the sweet stuff that tracks that all and does it for us. I uh, hope that's still worthwhile and useful for folks. Uh, and honestly, look, we got to do our due diligence here. We have to educate folks. We have to raise awareness on this. I've gone ahead and reported this domain, the obsstremsweave.site, uh, and hopefully we'll be able to get that thing uh, in the file itself a little bit more known within VirusTotal and other antivirus engines. And we'll keep chatting about this thing in this video in the scene here with other content creators and uh hopefully you can spread the word just as well uh if you'd like to hey you know some sweet ways that might help out with that are pumping us up in the youtube algorithm if you don't mind hey like comment subscribe if you like this in video and you wanted to see more if you're willing to support there are links down below to hey support uh financial one way or the other if you like patreon paypal and please 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 go give some love to the sponsor of today's video they are the reason that we can keep doing great stuff like this and maybe chatting more and more about it but uh with that man i'm done rambling i promise i'll see you all later in another video and thank you thank you thank you huge kudos and props to the folks already reporting on this and again mudahar for keeping keeping us, uh, you know, here on the front lines. Thanks all.